praise the Lord and warmly welcome you to the worship room. It's a blessing and an honor. Hallelujah. Let's worship the Lord. Hallelujah. You give life. You are love. You bring light to the darkness. You bring hope. You restore every heart that is broken. Great are you, Lord. It's your breath in our lungs. So we pour out a praise, pour out a praise. It's your breath. In our lungs, so we pour out a praise to you only. You give life, you are love, you bring light to the dark. together.
great are you, Lord. Great are you, Lord. Great are you, Lord. Great are you, Lord. So I warmly welcome you uh, once again this week. It's been an amazing week and uh, do let us know where you're joining from as always. And uh, it truly is just amazing when we actually come together as part of the body of Christ to be able to glorify our Heavenly Father. And uh, today I want to be able to share with you what the Lord has been really pressing into my heart. And uh, it's actually about looking beyond the horizon you know sometimes we're so focused on the seasons that we are in the very seasons that we are part of and uh, we sometimes tend to miss out trying to focus on everything else that has been happening or that is taking place in our lives in this season but uh, God works in mysterious ways and God's plans are completely different to our plans God's plans work totally in a different level to our plans our wants our needs and we need to come to understand that he wants to reveal these things he wants to constantly reveal his plans and purposes because he created us together in his image for a purpose, for something significant. And he didn't just create us and dump us on this earth. He created us wanting us to represent that very atmosphere. Because the heavenly atmosphere is completely different to that of what it is on this earth right now. And we need to understand that God is trying to constantly tap into every single one of his children to reveal their plans and purposes that he has to fulfill also the very mission that he has for you and I. See, hallelujah. Hallelujah. So as I title this message, Beyond the Horizon, and even as we worshipped and sang unto the Lord, He is a great, great, good, good Father. He is, he is so much more greater than the word can ever fathom to understand. The words that we uh, speak in our languages, the very understanding is far more different to than what God is. But we tend to even call God Yahweh, the Holy One. But we need to understand his being is beyond expression in the human form. Hallelujah. So as we go into his word today, I want to be able to uh, say, keep your Bibles ready. We're going to look into scripture and we're going to do this as the Holy Spirit guides. So let us pray and ask the Holy Spirit his guidance today that it is not my, my power, my works or my preparation, but it is totally opening up our hearts to receive all that the Lord has in store. So loving Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, for yet another day, Father, yet another week, in yet another month, Father. As we step into this day, Father, we want to glorify you. We want to honor you. We want to worship you. We want to give it all that 
all that we have father we want to surrender it into your hands father even as we enter this brand new month father we want to glorify your name above every other name and we want to fulfill all your plans and purposes so father have your way in us in jesus name we want to look beyond the horizons not to focus on what's happening right now we want to stand steadfast in it all in jesus name amen hallelujah hallelujah so let's look into the word of god in the book of hebrews chapter 11 verse 1 hallelujah see some people have scoffed off christians because we live by faith because we believe that which we cannot see because we are assured of things for which we can now only hope God's word says and are convinced of that which we cannot yet see and without faith it is impossible to please God because anyone who comes to him must believe that he exists and that he rewards those who earnestly seek him so there is something more and we have seen it God has revealed to us it abides in our minds and our hearts the best is yet to come hallelujah hallelujah see some people say i believe only what i see we hear that most of the time around us and sometimes even you and i may have said it i want you to know that they mean that they believe only that which they can test with their five senses human beings do this most of the time which they can see hear taste touch and smell the five senses they mean that they will accept only that which they can examine to through their senses or measure or dissect or verify by experiment most scientists do this how short sighted all the greatest scientists have been people of great vision people who saw in their minds that which they could only hope some day to verify in a particular in a laboratory see the great einstein albert einstein predicted many strange and wonderful things that scientists are still verifying almost more than half a century later see now faith is assurance of things hoped for proof of things not seen as it says in god's word in the book of hebrews as we led read in the book of hebrews chapter 11 verse 1 see 4000 years ago god called abraham to leave his hometown and go to a place that god would show him God did not show him a brochure with pictures of a promised land like sometimes you know when we want to go on holiday we might look through brochures but nowadays everything is on the world wide web so we'll just go to google and just you know go to a website or even request them to send everything in a digital form God didn't reveal images God didn't show him a brochure with pictures of the promised land Abraham was not like the American settlers who we've read we've done history I love the subject of history and even today most of the time I love watching documentaries in many things today when I watch even in the secular the right things God reveals many things even when I'm preparing and see God Abraham was not like the American settlers who dreamed of free land and abundant riches abundant gold abraham left his home and departed on a lifetime journey not because he believed in gold or silver but because he believed in god he believed in god god promised abraham that he would make a great nation of him but the fulfillment of of the promise was a long time in coming when abraham and sarah arrived in the promised land they did not even have a permanent house a permanent dwelling place they could buy only a burial plot 
they could only buy a burial plot in that foreign land they could only look forward to the great city whose maker and builder is god abraham and sarah became older and older time went by not only had god not made of them a great nation but he had not even given them a son the time for childbearing had passed for them and they did not even have a child god is like that sometimes i need you to understand that we wait and we pray and we wonder where is god has he heard will he answer most might say why hasn't he answered by now you might ask what is real abraham's faith was real god's promises are real and because abraham's faith and god's promises are real i need to catch this isaac the son of abraham and sarah was real israel the great nation that god promised to make of the seed of abraham and sarah was real and is real the people of abraham became the people of god for more than 3000 years they have watched empires come and go but they are still with us today throughout the millennia from the very beginning understand in the beginning when everything was void god created it all into being it was his canvas the greatest artist ever his palette his creativity together with jesus and the holy spirit and it was his plan that unveiled which is why upon the creation coming to being he was clearly pleased in the book of genesis we read we are not just supposed to be taught that as a story but to drill it into us as part of our dna as it is connected to him connected to god we were created in total connection as we are formed in god's image in spirit when he breathed when god breathed the very first breath of life into us i need you to catch this and from that the very first man that was created we have followed down the lines without disconnection as his creation has always been through the trials and tribulations that the generations have faced to this day what we have to know to this date is that his word is alive and well because those that received did not falter did not waver but stood steadfast amidst that that fell aside to keep on preaching to keep on testifying to keep on sharing to generation upon generation that is made a life changing impact that his word was kept alive through life changing experiences we need to understand that in our mission through the great commission is constantly be able to receive from god's word receive from everything that is taught and to be able to rise and testify to rise and share all god is doing so that it makes an impact and leaves something within another life so that that life can go forward we were created to be disciples of christ not just disciples but disciple making disciples that means if you just constantly just receive and do not overflow into others lives what good is that going to make what good is that going to do you're going to just focus and receive but in everything else that's happening around you your mind is going to constantly wander we weren't created to wander around we were created to marvel at his wonder and to glorify him testify him give him all glory worship honor praise day in day out not focusing on the here and now we are witnessing trying times even through the pandemic natural disasters and other disasters that are happening but we were supposed to bring good hope good news through his hope we were supposed to carry the good news of god's word when disasters happened 
instead of putting our hand over our head going on a apoy and all these alarming responses that human beings are dramatic sometimes and i say most of the time even more than the non believers it is the believers of christ following believers that are behaving this way today what are we declaring from our mouth what are our responses we were not created just to unify and live in harmony i don't know who's been preaching that stuff but jesus never did god's word doesn't even say that you've skimmed and this is what happens when we are taking extracts from everyone and you do not read god's word yourself you do not connect to the holy spirit all the time 24/7 we're focused on listening to things that are said by other people without seeing it for yourself and then you just get sucked in to stories that is why in more than anything no matter what happens around me it doesn't shake me it doesn't bother me i don't live for the sake of others lives i live for christ i live and breathe for him so that in everything that happens around me my focus is always just focused on him which is why when things happen humanly sometimes i get agitated but god has always kept me strong when stories are said when things happen when trials and tribulations around me happen you don't even see me budge nowadays it doesn't it's nothing to do with arrogance but i thank god as a kingdom citizen we do not shake he is for us it is the weak that sadly get sucked into the weaknesses of others and sadly you get into sympathy which has nothing to do with the sympathetic focus that god really put into our hearts through compassion we need to understand we stand to overcome and share with an urgency and i share with an urgency in my heart constantly be to be a witness in everything that god puts into my heart each day through everything that i face i stand to overcome and share with an urgency in my heart to proclaim the good news of jesus christ who is my savior my lord my king and in whom i trust and whom i follow to show a world which seems to have no hope that there is a way and through jesus christ alone only through christ alone you can find that hope and peace to stand up in the midst of adversity and tribulation trials and to show the unconditional agape love of our savior and not to compromise one bit for a practical way of life in a fallen world for it, for the easy way out but to keep pressing on when things get difficult and not to turn back and run but to know that you are never alone when you hit those seasons of your life and to know that as you climb those mountains and there will be moments you will have to descend to the valley you are not alone you are not alone for he is with you Jesus is with you. He will not forsake you nor leave you because as you come back down after a mountain top experience, he will simply strengthen you and mold you further in your journey of life so that you can continue to climb back up trusting in him who is holy. He is with you right beside you as you go through every step. Hallelujah. Know that the same power that rose Jesus from the grave the same and very power that commands the dead to wake that power that moves mountains when he speaks the same power that can calm a raging sea when the disciples were so worried thinking that the storm would engulf them Jesus spoke and there was peace peace be still But Jesus believed that the disciples could do it but the disciples their focus one was on the now and rather than focusing on what God had planned over their lives understand we need to have hope that his promises are true and in his strength there is nothing we cannot do for there are greater things to come 
and though it all and through it all we will not be overtaken and we will not be overcome for our strength constantly is in him greater is he that is in the world greater is he that is in me that is than that is in the world understand that greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world understand that i encourage you that no weapon formed against you who stands by faith trusting in his word nothing formed against you i say that again nothing formed against you shall ever come to be nor prosper god's word clearly says that no power of darkness no weapon formed against you shall ever prevail we are a generation of people who ought to stand constantly by faith in right standing knowing our identity in Christ Jesus and as is as he is victorious we are a victorious generation who were given this life to live in him for him for he paid an ultimate price so that we do not repeat what was in the past what the others in the bible are mentioned we are some are so focused on biblical extracts and they're focused on all oh, these people did this and they fell don't focus on their falling but know how they overcame god's word is given to us as a living proof that god is alive but that there is a way hope life strength we need to catch these extracts we need to catch these life nuggets that god is revealing constantly to jesus' word understand that understand that he paid an ultimate price for that purpose so that he is revealing things to us understanding that it is not the past that we focused in but the legacy of our lives is to reflect in all that's mentioned through god's word that our lives are to make a greater impact as jesus mentioned that we will make sure we stand firm in his word not to serve the kingdom as a generation balance to those we share and make them we're not supposed to compromise and live this balanced harmonious life you know peace be to you and living amongst in harmony gradually gradually to everything that was taught when i was growing up and we're part of that last generation it will it seems that way we need to change that if we are to truly make an impact and change because to everything that was taught way back to me when i was growing up back in the 80s and to now the faith system and the 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 christians belief system if you put it on a chart it's it's gone that way and then suddenly nose dived and it's nose dived so subtly that people haven't even realized it what the christians believe today to what they ought to believe is completely diverse it's completely different to how it ought to be understand what's the reflection that we're supposed to make understand the purpose of this very life we are to live and reflect we all carry out for ch- we are we're constantly created to make change in a world that's suffering but many times you and i myself the question we used to ask constantly is how am i to make a difference we hear people say what do i do next the ultimate truth is that we alone cannot do anything through our own strength i'm speaking to some of you right now as myself and i've drilled this in that nothing can shake me understand you and i alone cannot do anything through our own strength nor power for we shall surely we will surely fail you can try certain things on your own plans certain plans and yes you might see a little change and you'll think oh great i can do it on my own you will fail in the end but jesus said catch this 
But Jesus said to his disciples, who were themselves questioned in times of testing. Jesus said in the book of Romans, chapter 8, verses 11, I leave with you my spirit. Romans 8 and 11 reveals to us, and if the spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead lives in you, he who raised Christ Jesus from the dead will also give life to your mortal bodies through his spirit who lives in you. If the spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead lives in you and I, he will give us strength to our mortal bodies through his spirit that lives in you. So we are to step out in his power, to step out by faith, to proclaim what? To proclaim that Jesus is alive, to proclaim his word, his truth, to proclaim Jesus to the world through boldness and his unconditional agape love. And for you who stand steadfast, trust and be sure that attacks will come. Trials are sure to come. They have to come to fulfill biblical prophecy, no other prophecy. And when you face those giants and mountains along the seasons, stand and know. As the book of 1 John 4, chapter 4, verse 4 says, reveals that greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. We read before, know the enemy is defeated and our victory is in Jesus and our lives created with the kingdom purpose far beyond what has been twisted through the generations to adapt and adopt to the ways of living on this earth. Do not give in to the ways of this world and allow your voice to be a mere echo, but let it be ever so clear that it will have a ripple effect as you be a vessel for his voice to be heard declaring one word, one name above all other names. And that name is Jesus, the Holy One of Israel, the Lion of Judah and the King of Kings. And we are his beloved children. Know that you and I, we are his precious children. In our mission to stand for kingdom truth, will, now, will you constantly know this? Will you now know when you are needed most? understand will you now when you are needed most stop at only words will you stop at only words or continue to strive forward trusting in him we are called by God we are called by Yahweh through his word to stand through action and not just mere words I encourage you and ask you that you act upon the beliefs of which you have so strongly stood and spoken since you started following Christ and in which you so strongly stood by faith and proclaim his word never allowing anyone or anything to come in the way and know that he is for you and that nothing can stand against you hallelujah I for one love God with all my heart and my soul. Knowing his ways always above every other way. Constantly to seek him daily. To know him more than anything. It gives me courage over every overwhelming opposition to my conviction. When my knees are weak and when I may feel overwhelmed, I encourage you, even if you are feeling overwhelmed at times, know that he will constantly give you and I strength and encouragement so we can stand to encourage and give others, leading them to him. And as he stands, and so I know I can stand too and know that you can stand too through him. Trusting that nothing is through me, nothing is through what you do, but in whom 
constantly that we keep our faith in that is Jesus it is as i stand it is as i stand always in him he gives me all the strength i need hallelujah second timothy 4:17 reveals but the lord stood with me and he gave me strength but the lord stood on my side and gave me strength so that through me the message might be fully proclaimed preached and all the gentiles might hear it and i was delivered from the lion's mouth isn't that amazing hallelujah praise the lord so let's worship the lord once more and trust in him and even as we are going to partake in the lord's table i want you to go and prepare yourself even as we worship the lord for a few moments for a few minutes and be able to get yourself ready to partake in communion and we'll do this together and let's keep our hearts opened to receive and surrender hallelujah 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 Jesus. Hallelujah Father. Let's worship the Lord and just prepare our hearts to receive from his table. Thank you Father for you are the lamb of God. No other sacrifice could ever Father come close to the price that you paid. And Father Lord through the seasons we've gone through the motions constantly crying out to you constantly trying to figure things out Father but we do not want to figure things out any more on our own but we want to totally surrender our hearts withholding nothing back Lord have your way in us so that we could rise to fulfill the plans the purposes that you have for us lord open the eyes of our hearts even as we go through this season father even through this live broadcast father even as people are joining let our eyes not be glued trying to figure things out but be steadfast ever ready father putting on the whole armor of you into our lives grounding ourselves not with the news that surrounds the world but with your word that reveals the only news the good news the hope that you bring and through you all things are possible lord have your way in us jesus into your hands we surrender sing this together your only son no sin to hide but you have sent him from your side to walk upon this guilty soul and to become the lamb of god your gift of love they crucified they laughed and scorned him as his as he died the humble king they named the fraud and sacrificed the lamb of god o lamb of god sweet lamb of god 
I love the holy Lamb of God. Oh, wash me in His precious blood. My Jesus Christ, the Lamb of God. I was so lost, I should have died. But you have brought me to your side to be led by your staff and rod and to be called the Lamb of God O oh, Lamb of God sweet Lamb of God I love the whole O oh, Lamb of God O oh, wash me precious blood my Jesus Christ the Lamb of God my Jesus Christ the Lamb of God my Jesus Christ the Lamb of God. Hallelujah. 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 See, we come to the Lord's Supper together as one family. Even as Jesus gathered on that fateful evening with those that walked with him all that time. We come to the Lord's Supper together as children of our one God. Jesus makes the guest list, as I always say this, not us. Our families chosen by God, the people around us placed by God. No matter where you gather from right now, even on this broadcast from the west to the east to the north to the south. Jesus, when he was resurrected from the dead, revealed himself to his disciples in the breaking of bread around a table. Today we see ourselves constantly surrounded by Jesus. He is with us. May we see the face of God today as we come to the Lord's Supper. See, on the night Jesus was handed over, the night before Jesus was crucified, Jesus gathered with his friends, the ones he walked closely with, for a meal. He took the bread and after blessing it, he broke it saying, This is my body which is broken for you. As often as you eat it, remember me. Hallelujah. Let us pray. Loving Heavenly Father, even as we take this bread to remember as your body, Father Lord, trusting and believing that as you were broken, as you were bruised, Father Lord, for our iniquities, for our shortcomings, for everything that we do, Father, even to this day, Father, let us focus no longer on the past, but let us focus on you, trusting and believing that through you all things are made new, Father. Beholding that we are a brand new creation through you, Lord. So we trust and believe and trust and surrender our lives, asking you to carry our lives forward, Father, through your Holy Spirit, whom we want to lead us and guide us in every way. Have your way in us, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Let us partake together. Hallelujah.
After sharing the bread, Jesus took a cup of wine and gave it to them to drink, saying, This is my blood of the new covenant, which is poured out for many. Hallelujah. Father, Jesus, as we drink from this cup, let it be a sign for us in all that you did for us, Father. Even as we trust and believe that we have been made new, Father, let our walk forward no longer focus on everything that's happening around us, Father. We trust and believe that great things are yet to come, Lord, but through it all, we want to focus to fulfill your plans and purposes through our lives and as you reveal to us on a day-to-day -day basis, let us be steadfast, focusing not what's right in front of us. Help us to focus on the mission, to look beyond the horizon, trusting and believing that, Father, Lord, the plans that you may have through us, Father, we may not even live to see it, Father, but let us do it with a joyful heart, Father. Let us be able to continue this mission so that we would have laid a foundation for the generation that is here, present now, and the generations to come. That your word will be alive, your word will never be compromised. The word that was and is and will constantly be, Father, the same word that will be proclaimed, the same word that will be taught, the same word that will be grounded into every heart of your people, Father. In Jesus' name, have your way. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father, for bringing us peace that passes understanding that you bring that peace that passes all understanding. Thank you, Jesus. Let us drink this together. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So Jesus, through your death and resurrection, you reconciled the world to your Father, to our Father who is in heaven. And through your example, we have shown, you have shown us a way to peace, to live for you. Oh, give us strength, Lord, as the people of God, to be channels of peace in the world, speaking your peace, living your peace. And always longing for that moment of eternal peace. That when we shall see you again. In Jesus name. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. So go in peace. To love and serve the Lord with all of your heart. All of your souls and all your mind. And may the grace of our loving Lord and Savior. Rest and abide in each and every one of us. May his sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit be a constant guide, not as and when, but let he be the guide in every decision, every move, every thought. Let us stop to reason. Let us stop the focusing on everything else. Let us stop debating. Let us stop compromising. Let us stop just using this but let us open the eyes of our hearts so that the brain will start to align to the father's heart so that he will be able to reveal all things in Jesus name until we see you again from the worship room I'm Angelo saying God bless you and may his shalom peace be upon you in Jesus name